What's going on guys, it's Omniarch and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be talking about how you can make some of the best thumbnails for your YouTube videos. Now this video is a little bit different than the types of videos that I upload to my channel, uh, but I do think it is relevant for maybe some of you guys who watch my content, who make content yourself, or maybe people who are interested in getting involved in making YouTube videos. And this is mainly going to be, you know, covering gaming content, but I think a lot of the things that I talk about in this video can be a transition to pretty much any niche or category on YouTube. I think that a lot of this in information is transferable now if you guys are you know wanting to get better at making thumbnails just like any other skill that you that you um, are trying to get better at it's really gonna take some time to get used to using Photoshop or similar programs to you know get the end result that you're looking for and with that being said this is gonna be a bit of a longer video I'm gonna try to cut it as little as possible I literally had to cut it right after that because I burped anyway one last thing guys if you're watching this video it means that you're probably trying trying to grow your YouTube channel um, or take YouTube a bit more seriously. And if that is the case, I did actually write a book about mastering content creation. I released the book uh, almost a year ago at this point. You can actually go to the link in the description below. Uh, if you have Kindle Unlimited, you would get it for free. If you guys want to get the ebook version, it's very, very cheap. It's like $3 or something like that. That's the best way for you to not only get a quick overview of every content platform and how you can do better on them uh, but also support me as a content creator and if nothing else um, just go down there and drop a five-star review on my book so that way you know if you maybe you can't afford it or you're not interested but you still want to show some support it does help me a ton because putting five-star reviews on on books actually does uh, help me get my book up into the search rankings on Amazon so I think that would help you guys out a ton if again if you are trying to grow your YouTube channel that book is probably a really good place to start. It's a pretty short read and I would really, really appreciate it. I think it would help you guys. With that being said, let's jump into the topic of the video. Now I'm going to be referencing my phone a little bit because I do have the bullet notes on my phone here. Um, and I, I just wanted to start off by comparing this thumbnail um, that I use on a recent upload on my channel with this thumbnail, which I used uh, about a year ago, a little bit over a year ago. And, you know, from the looks of it, these thumbnails aren't that different, right? They both are gameplay related. They both have a lot of green. They both have a lot of yellow. Um, they both have a similar font, same font color or gradient. Um, they both have a border on them. But I think there's a huge, actually a huge difference between this thumbnail and this thumbnail. And it actually does show in the data because this thumbnail that we're looking at right here had an average click through rate of about 20%. Now, if you guys don't believe me, this is the analytics for that video. Um, you can see the impressions click through rate is 19.2% um, with 1.5 thousand views, which is way better for my channel than usual. Um, usually my videos get around the 200 view mark. So hitting over a thousand views is not that common for my YouTube channel. Um, and a 20% click through rate is really, really good on YouTube. Uh, obviously the higher, the better. Um, essentially what this metric is, is how many people clicked your video after seeing the thumbnail so you can see that this thumbnail was seen by 5.6 thousand people and we have 1.5 thousand views so it's about a 20 percent um uh, click through rate it's gone down slightly the more views it gets it goes down slightly um, but regardless that's a really good click through rate a lot of my videos have anywhere from a uh, i would say like a five to six percent click through rate some of them hit around 10 or 11 um, but you know really good videos have around a 20 to 25 percent click through rate and so the other thumbnail that i have here uh, I don't remember what the click-through rate was for this this video again was like a year ago and th This video was pretty forgettable on my YouTube channel. I forgot that I uploaded this video I think a lot of people did it didn't get that many views needless to say it 
it didn't perform very well and my channel hasn't really grown that much in the last year it has grown maybe very slightly uh, but nothing major it's still over 6,000 uh, subscribers between last year and this year so we've pretty much sat at around the same subscriber mark for again like a year so it's not like my channel grew a ton from here to here um and it's not like my content really changed both of these are call of duty thumbnails um so there's a couple of things that make this thumbnail a lot more clickable than this thumbnail even though like i said at the beginning of the video they use a same font same font color similar um similar overall color patterns we're looking at mostly greens for these and a border and everything both of them are video game related so there's a couple of key points that i want to talk to you guys about with regards to this thumbnail and how you guys can make thumbnails that get high click-through rates um or at least increase your odds of getting those high click-through rates because even if you do everything on this list that i'm about to tell you it's really a, a numbers game and there's there's so many factors that go into click-through rate right like it just might be the type of uh, the time of day that you're posting maybe that specific day uh, a ton of big creators post similar content and you're just not gonna get seen so there's a lot of things that factor into it but what you want to do ideally with every upload that you post is you want the most clickable thumbnail and that's not gonna guarantee you clicks and it's not gonna guarantee you views but it's just gonna skew the odds in your favor and that's really all you can ever hope for here on YouTube so uh, let's talk about why these two thumbnails performed so differently now these things I'm going to talk about are not in order of importance I think they're all important and the more of them that you're able to incorporate in a thumbnail the better um, but the first thing that I want to talk about is the border of the video and this is something that I recently changed um, if you look at my, some of my last few uploads this is a recent change that I've done and I think it looks a lot better this is what the borders used to look like for my YouTube videos and I used to actually um, I used to basically just pull a gradient over these borders and I would change the color of the gradient depending on like the background of that particular video. So and actually for this one, I can't pull a gradient. It actually already has a gradient overlay. So I could just go through and change it like that. Um, and so that changes the color of the border. But the thing with this is um, one thing that I noticed actually is that back in um, early 2018 or mid 2018 YouTube actually um, brought out a dark mode for their both their website and also their mobile app for both Android and iPhone and I think a lot of people use the dark mode I, I don't maybe I'm wrong about this um, I could be completely wrong I personally use dark mode on pretty much everything and I think dark mode has been a fad lately because everyone's talking about blue light exposure especially in the evenings you've probably heard of something along those lines even if you think it's a conspiracy but regardless I think people are using dark mode more than we think um, and so this type of border does two things one this thick white border stands out really really well on a dark mode uh, dark mode screen right I mean you can even tell like just just by doing this this whole area around here is dark and the white pops whereas here the border kind of blends in with the actual video so it doesn't really pop too well um and again it, that might sound like a small thing but the fact that it's thicker and very contrasting to the background would definitely draw someone's eye a lot more than a thin colored border so that's one thing and if they are using the standard youtube layout that's just a white background instead of the dark mode um then you have the this is kind of like a texture that I added to the border I can kind of zoom in here to show you guys this is more of like a texture here I added this texture to the border because if they are on the standard YouTube um, uh, color setup I suppose or theme um, then the color from the background of the thumbnail bleeds into that white border so it's still a disruptive thick white border that would stand out on dark mode but it also would um, look as if the thumbnail is popping through the white background of the standard YouTube theme so it still is better at drawing attention in my opinion than something like this which kind of blends in with the thumbnail regardless um, and I think that that's important so that's the first thing that I wanted to talk about and touch base on is the is the border on the actual thumbnail the second one is that if you're trying to make the best possible thumbnail you do want to have reds 
oranges and yellows for your color scheme especially for the text which is something that I've done on both of these so this isn't really a difference between the two but if you are making thumbnails um, and you're making for your videos and you're trying to think of what color should I make the text just make it a, a yellow or an orange or a red or something like that because that really draws the eye I mean odds are your video is gonna get scroll past way more than people are going to click on it and most likely they didn't even see your video even if it was on their screen so you need something to to pull their eye away just for a fraction of a second and the color red actually is really good at doing that and that's why um, stop signs are red stop lights are red uh, sirens on the tops of police vehicles and on the tops of ambulances they're all red because it it, it is the most attractive color to the eye to the human eye for many reasons um, but it's just the, the the most attractive it stands out the most to the human eye so um, yeah try to incorporate reds or um, at least bright yellows and oranges or even some greens uh, that to really pull the attention of the of the viewer or, or of the of the the person who's casually scrolling past your thumbnail now another key thing is actually using the uh, the face of a person in your thumbnail and YouTube actually came out and confirmed this from their own data they actually said that if you have a picture of a human face in your thumbnail it's more likely to get clicks simply because people relate to people right like on a subconscious level uh if you were to look at this thumbnail you might not really know what's going on here but at least when you see this you actually see a human face and that's a subconscious thing where you you understand like okay i'm looking at somebody like this this guy must be like relevant or uh, you know something um where you can un you can understand what you're looking at you're looking at a person whereas if you look at this and you've never seen black ops 4 or, or black ops 3 or whatever you might not know what you're looking at you might be like okay there's some leaves here and this is like a gun so then you feel like, okay it's a first person perspective no it we're talking about fractions of fractions of fractions of a second of attention and this is just one of those primitive things that is hardwired into humans brains um it you know even if it takes a second for someone to realize what they're looking at here they know what this is in a quarter of a second like it's just so much faster so much easier so implementing faces in your thumbnails whenever it makes sense to um is definitely going to help you with click through rate and with clickability and with your, your thumbnails just performing better overall um so that's a clear difference between these two even though his face is obstructed you can still tell that that is a face two eyes and a nose you know what this is um um, you know that's a person so that's a big difference between these two thumbnails so let's move on to the next thing that really makes um, a good thumbnail and something that's very clickable um, that is if you're doing uh, a thumbnail that involves PNGs or pictures stock pictures use high quality images and high quality PNGs and this really goes without saying but you know if you're taking if you're taking a picture from the internet and using it in your thumbnail and it's not a high quality image uh it's probably going to be smaller than your thumbnail meaning like if you know if this was like the the native size of this image right if i pulled the image off the internet like that and then i had to scale it up um it would look really blurry i mean you can even probably even tell like that looks way more blurry than now that i've scaled it up than it did before and so that's what i'm talking about where when you're looking like if you're pulling Im images from the internet to use on your thumbnail um it should be high quality images and one way to guarantee this is when you're searching for images on google type in whatever it is so for in this instance it would be like call of duty right you type in call of duty and then you can filter out by size and i always filter by large because i want the images to be large which means they're going to be a high resolution image that means the dimensions of the image are going to be big um, which is good because my uh thumbnails i believe this is a um uh let me see i think it's 1280 uh, let me just check before i even look like an idiot yeah 1280 by 720 so that's um i believe that's that would be considered 720p but i think this is actually the size that youtube recommends at least it's what they used to recommend maybe they've changed it um but that's the size that you know youtube recommends so if you're pulling an image that's like 
you know, uh, 500 by 500 or, you know, 400 by 400, you're going to stretch it up to fit this size and it's going to look terrible. So always use uh, high quality images. Excuse me while I rub my eye. High quality images, high quality PNGs if you're pulling renders like of this guy. Um, with that being said, let's move on to the next thing. Simple words. Okay. You should have words in your thumbnail because putting words in your thumbnail, it's just, it pops way more than the title of your video. Um, and people are going to read it even if it takes a second. And, and again, if someone is looking at your video, scrolling past it, and they only see your video for a half a second, they're not going to read large strings of text, right? They're not. So what I've been trying to do lately is minimize, just have a minimum of like, or maximum, sorry, a maximum of maybe three maybe four words on a single thumbnail and i want all of those words to be very clear very simple very short words um this video has text that is you know it follows my other rules of it being yellow and orange and it pops but it's a lot of text, right? That's like a whole sentence. I put a whole sentence here. Why I didn't play the Black Ops 4 beta. And, you know, it might not seem like a big deal. Again, it might seem like this doesn't matter, but I promise you it makes a big difference because, again, if you're scrolling past this, um, cancel your pre-order. That is a simple phrase that is very large. The text is very large. If you look here, the text is very small on this thumbnail. It's about a quarter of the, of the thumbnail, right? Whereas if you look here, this is like half the thumbnail. This text is like half the thumbnail. So we're talking, this text is twice the size of this text here. And it's only three let uh, three words as opposed to what, what is this? Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine words. So it's a third of the amount of, of words, but twice the size. So it's way, way, way easier for somebody's subconscious to pick up on this text because it's three simple words, massive size on the thumbnail. Here, it's nine words. It's basically a sentence. It's smaller. You have to really concentrate to read it all. Um, and so that's a big deal. Like you really, if you're going to put text, make it very large, easy to read and make it simple words that get the point across, right? And that brings me to my next point, which is making your thumbnail pop even when it's smaller. And this is like the biggest deal. This is the biggest deal. And I hope you guys are understanding this. Um, and if you guys didn't know this, then this, or if you're not doing this already, this is going to really help you out a lot. Um, zoom all the way out for this thumbnail, right? Let's zoom all the way out. How big do you think this is going to be on YouTube, right? That big, maybe that big, like maybe that big it depends on the on the on the viewer the the consumer of the content but on youtube your your thumbnail is going to be really small right if it's on the featured section on the right bar or if it's on the home page or something maybe it's this big right we're talking very small thumbnail sizes if someone's scrolling past it so let's let's um zoom out to 18.83 for both of these so now these are both the same size thumbnail right these are the same size um regardless it doesn't matter i can't deselect there we go these are the same size thumbnail okay so now that we have zoomed out which one is easier to read this one or this one right like before when we were up here it seemed like the text was large but now that we've zoomed out now that we're here it's uh it's a big deal it's a huge 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 difference and i think it really matters a lot so when we start to look at thumbnails uh in this t in this size it makes everything that i've talked about before even more important because now you realize like okay this is actually what people are going to see they are not going to see you know they're not going to see this people aren't looking at this they're looking at this and that's a big big difference and it makes all of the small changes really big changes. I mean, when you're looking at this thumbnail at this size, you can't even really tell the difference between the color of the of the tiles or the ground here and the color of this glove. So somebody who's not really sure what they're looking at, they scroll past us, they're not even going to know this is a grappling hook. They're not even going to know what anything is here. They're not really going to understand this specific thumbnail and they're just going to scroll right past it. I mean, again, these are people who don't know any of your content. Most likely they might think this is like a storage container or some sort of box. And this is, you know, this is just a car parked in the distance, you know, like it, it they can't, they don't know what they're looking at, but here 
you can still see the guy's face you can still see all the text super easy plain and obvious and the red of this cross out is very very visible now the cross out is something else that i want to talk about because it's a little controversial to use symbols and emblems like this um but it's really effective when you do it the right way and you know the the reason that that this is so effective for a, a thumbnail like this is because not only is it a big red cross out um but it contrasts everything on the thumbnail it's a giant red circle with a cross through it and it's on a green background with yellow text like this red mark sticks out like crazy so if this is shown to somebody on dark mode not only is the whole thumbnail popping out because the white border contrasts the black background or the dark background but the cross out pops out even more so now there's like multiple reasons for somebody to look at this thumbnail for a fraction of a second and then when they look at it they see three big simple words cancel your pre-order and they 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 just it's it's just so much easier for somebody to get pulled into this video than it is for something like this because like i said before a lot of this is greens and yellows and it, the text blends in especially on a smaller size and you don't know what you're looking at and the border blends in with the colors of the thumbnail which blends in with the colors of the there's no contrast here there's nothing that pops out even though the text is the same color as the text here this text is far less effective than this right i think it's even the same font uh and it's a it's a world of difference between these two so back to this uh this cross out is what i like to call a disruptive logo or a disruptive icon um things like this or things like um red arrows or things like uh you know giant x's on the video or you know red circles or something like that those are what i would call like a disruptive icon and it's basically the idea is that it's a little bit controversial right you're you're making a stance or making a claim with that specific little emblem right not like imagine if i made this thumbnail without that it just says cancel your pre-order automatically this thumbnail is less clickable right because not only do we use that we lose that giant contrasting red circle with the cross through it but this symbol means something this symbol is it's a universal symbol that means like you know um delete or cancel or do not like right and so you're giving the viewer uh symbolic information without even having to say it right um of course i do kind of say it here with cancel your pre-order but the idea is that this is way more eye-catching than this because this is a very disruptive and you're taking a stance with this uh, with this specific symbol same thing with a red arrow a big red arrow does the same job it's it's contrasting the entire thumbnail as long as the whole background isn't red obviously um and but it's pointing at something on the thumbnail that maybe the viewer wouldn't have really they might have scrolled past or not really looked at the thumbnail too carefully but the arrow is saying you should look at this look at look at this right here um and people are just like it's subconscious again we're talking about fractions of a second subconscious things that people don't even think about they don't even realize that they're doing and the arrow is is basically forcing them to before they have the ability to judge whether or not they should look at what the arrow is pointing at they've already looked at what the arrow is pointing at because it's not a, it's not a conscious decision people just know that if there's an arrow just look at where it's pointing like that's just how humans are wired so using disruptive imagery really helps a lot with not only adding to the contrasting nature of the of the photo red arrows red x's everything like that but also uh because it's 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 basically um it's kind of clickbaity because you're you're making a stance you're making a claim through symbols without saying it right so i think i've made my point clear with that let's move on to um the last one that is making your phrases on your thumbnails kind of clickbaity right and you know this is might be frowned upon right it might be frowned upon and i think both of these videos have a relatively clickbaity um phrase right cancel your pre-order like that's kind of like um uh, presumptuous or you know it's like saying like I know better than you right like you should cancel your pre-order even though you don't have to uh, this is saying why I didn't play the black ops 4 beta people who read that might be like wait why didn't he play the beta like you know if I'm a call of duty youtuber people would expect me to so these two things are kind of clickbaity um, this one is a bit more clickbaity obviously uh, and you know clickbait is controversial because you know it feels dishonest it feels like you know you're kind of cheating the system but the reality of it is 
and I've mentioned this on my channel before, clickbait has gotten so bad on the platform at this point that you don't really have a choice. If you want to grow your channel, you have to implement some level of clickbait in your thumbnails and in, in your titles and everything like that. And the more clickbait that you have, the more likely people are going to click on it. Um, but the problem is that you also should make it somewhat realistic to what they can expect to see when they get there, meaning get into the video, um, because otherwise you're going to get dislikes, people are going to click away really fast, and if you don't have audience retention, then YouTube's probably not going to show your thumbnail to that many people, right? So like if somebody clicks on their video, they watch, they you have a clickbait thumbnail, they click on it, they watch for... 12 seconds right and that's being generous because most people don't watch that long if you didn't know um but let's say they watch for 12 seconds and they realize that what they're watching has nothing to do with the clickbait on the thumbnail and they leave and let's say that happens over and over and over again because your thumbnail is super clickbait and you don't deliver on that clickbait promise then now your 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 watch time is really small and it's actually a percentage of your video it's not just like 12 seconds it's However, like if your video is 10 minutes long or 15 minutes long, uh, 12 seconds is like a fraction of a percent. Just kidding. 12 seconds on a 15 minute video is 1.3%. But regardless, that's terrible, right? That's a terrible retention rate. And what that tells YouTube is that this video is not that good. And if, if, if YouTube's algorithm doesn't think your video is that good, just based on that data, they're going to show that thumbnail to less and less people, which means even though that thumbnail is mega clickbait, uh, it doesn't matter because it's actually hurting your videos of view chances. So, you know, not only does your video have to be at least somewhat clickbait to get people to click on it, but it can't be so clickbaity that people click away right away because it's not what they wanted or not what they came for. Um, you know, you can't put like uh, Fortnite 50 kill gameplay or whatever. And they click on the video and it's like, you know, uh, you playing clash of clans, right? Like, you know, yes, Fortnite is more popular <clears throat> than clash of clans. Fortnite gets more view than Cl views than clash of clans. But you know, they're going to click it and be like, Oh, whatever, who cares? This isn't wh why am I watching this? And they'll leave. So hopefully you guys found this video, uh, interesting or, you know, um, useful in some way, uh, whether or not you're a gaming YouTuber or some other industry, um, or maybe you just wanted to understand the psychology of, of clickbait or the psychology of thumbnail creation. These are kind of the things that I'm thinking about when I'm making a thumbnail, I try to make the thumbnail, um, uh, you know, as, as visually appealing as possible. And these are the things that I'm thinking about, uh, to make them as, as appealing as possible. And that's why, you know, uh, once I get into a formula, you're going to see that formula uh, a couple of, for a few videos. Right. And I've been using this formula lately and for this video, it worked really, really well. So I'm going to keep this formula. I'm going to keep doing this and hopefully it, it helps my channel. Um, but yeah, ho again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. You learned something. If you did learn something and you made it this far into the video, I hope that I've earned a like a subscribe and maybe even turning on the notifications for my channel. If you are interested in call of duty and other gameplay types of videos, um, comment down below. If you have any questions about making thumbnails or anything like that, if you're not, if I didn't explain something clear enough or or if you have a question about something else with regards to thumbnails or anything like that, put them down in the comments section below. And if you want to know anything else about YouTube, like how do I pick my titles or how do I pick what to upload? Um, just let me know in the comment section below. Maybe I can start a series on, you know, just giving tips on growing on YouTube. Um, so hopefully this helped you guys out a lot. And again, not to plug twice, but my book is in the description below. I think it'll help you guys. If this is a topic you're interested in and you're a new YouTuber, then my book is going to help you a lot. I promise it's like three bucks. Um, and if you have Kindle unlimited, it's absolutely free. Uh, don't forget to leave a five star review for that book. And if you want to follow me on other social media links are also in the description. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.